Well, howdy folks, I'm Kevin with Lifestyle Overland and welcome to another installment of our Getting Started series. Now, whether you're just getting the outdoors or you've been around the world and back, the subject we're going to cover today is going to touch on an important topic for any outdoor enthusiast. So let's jump right in. In this age of technology with its electronic maps, handheld GPS navigation, and terabytes of satellite imagery to Google and daydream over, travel to far off remote places has never seemed easier. And with our culture gravitating more and more towards isolated activities, people are leaving crowded populated areas and shifting their attention towards the great outdoors. Now while all these advancements have been extremely helpful, there's an inherent risk when you take modern people like ourselves who are dependent on our handheld technology, sometimes just to drive across town and give us some fancy gadgetry for outdoor exploration. It's very easy for us to carry over our day-to-day -day reliance and sense of security to these devices. Now don't get me wrong, these units are extremely impressive, very reliable, and have indeed saved many lives. But taken for granted out in the wilderness, the wrong level of dependence on these could become dangerous and downright deadly in the worst of circumstances. We all have to remember that there is no easy button out here and no single device should ever replace a responsible level of preparation for the unexpected. In this video, we're gonna begin with the most important part of outdoor emergency preparedness, and that is the plan. Like we emphasized in our first Getting Started video, safety is up to you, and it all starts right here. So before you start swiping that credit card or smashing that buy it now button, let's walk you through the thought process that should be at the core of your emergency plan development. Now, whether you're solo or traveling with a group, emergency planning begins long before you load your gear and roll out of that driveway. The first question you need to ask yourself is, what are the risks for the adventure that I have planned? Mechanical failure, tire failure, GPS device failure, vehicle recovery, unexpected medical events, physical injury, animal attacks, insect bites, unexpected weather, and wildfire are all just a few examples of potential risks that you need to be aware of and spend some time considering how they may affect your travels. Just to give you some food for thought, let's break a few of these scenarios down and apply some practical questions on how we can mitigate each of these risks. Now, in the case of mechanical failure, have you closely inspected your rig recently? Are all its maintenance items up to date? And if you do break down, do you have a toolkit for basic repairs? What about extra fluids if you spring a leak? If a tire goes flat, do you have a good spare or a tire repair kit along with some sort of compressor? Do you have those fancy security style lugs on your wheels? And did you bring the right key and all the tools for a tire change, like a bottle jack or a high lift? Let's say you've downloaded all the maps and spent hours laying out your route, but you dropped your phone while taking an epic picture and now your device is completely useless. How are you gonna continue your trip or even get back to civilization? Did you download those maps to another device? Did you bring any paper maps? Do you have a compass? And did you stay aware of your location or just pay attention to land features like bodies of water, stream crossings, or mountain peaks to use as the starting point on your paper map? Let's say you plunged into an unassuming muddy puddle or drifted ditch like I have. Do you have a winch? What about traction boards? Or do you at least have a shovel to help extract your rig from the muddy or snowy abyss? Let's say you're all set with a brand new camp recipe and convince the kiddos to try a bite. 30 minutes later, you're dealing with an allergic reaction from an undiscovered food allergy. What's your next move? Do you have Benadryl? Do you know where the nearest hospital is? What's the fastest route there? Imagine you're a dad out alone with his two kids and you slip your ankle while on a hike away from camp. It's not a bad injury, but after hobbling around for a few feet, you realize you can't walk the entire two miles back to your rig. Night is coming on. What do you do? Do your kids know what to do? Or what if something more serious happened and you're unconscious? These are hard things to consider, but absolutely necessary. Many of you are exploring in bear country. So have you put together a clear plan for keeping your campsite clean and smells down to a minimum? Have you walked through what each person should do if a bear decides to stroll into camp? That bear spray, it's not gonna do you any good if it's not close at hand. And if the encounter turns bad, do you and your travel companions know where your SOS device is located? Have you ever been on a dusty, dry trail and watched a monsoon move in and drench the landscape in the course of just a few minutes? What happens to the trail? In many places, especially here out west, that trail can quickly turn from a Prius-friendly route to a slimy, greasy quagmire. And you might find yourself up against more than a challenge if you slip off the trail. It's also not uncommon to start your trip in shorts and t-shirts, 
only to find yourself in a snowstorm or bone-chilling wind after climbing a few thousand feet in altitude. Do you and your entire family have clothes for the unexpected weather? Do you have backup food and water if you have to spend some extra days on the trail waiting for conditions to improve? This is why it's a good idea to have some freeze-dried options stashed in your rig at all times. Now, I know extra water can be heavy and bulky, but there are a lot of compact water filters out there that you can carry when you know there's going to be water sources along the way. And remember, you need a way to stay warm as well. So do you have a lighter or a fire starter in your kit? And last but not least, wildfires are a very real risk depending on your region of travel. Did you check for fire restrictions before you left? Are you familiar with the main routes in and out of the area that you're exploring? And most importantly, do you have a fire extinguisher in case you have a vehicle issue or camp stove mishap? Every massive blaze starts with one single spark. And none of us want to be responsible for starting a wildfire because we didn't have a basic tool available, charged, and ready. Now these are all just a few examples of how things can go sideways. And none of this is intended to make you nervous or scare anyone away from an incredible adventure. But I'd rather you be a little fearful than blissfully ignorant of the risk or unpracticed in critical thinking. There's a lot of consideration that goes into our own adventure planning that we don't always have time to show in an episode. And while we love inspiring folks to get out and explore, we want to make sure you're thinking through the risks and preparing yourself for a safe, successful experience. Now, as we've talked to these possibilities, I think you can quickly see why it's important to include the whole family, friends, and fellow travelers in your planning. Please be sure and walk through the scenarios together because you'd be surprised at how different perspectives can put new ideas on the table. Now, in our family, we make this process feel like a game and practice it at home so it's not scary for Caroline. But the exercise of walking through these steps will help develop the instincts and critical, cool-headed thinking that's necessary for when things go wrong. Now, obviously, some of these scenarios require something you can't buy, and that's experience and skill. Maybe you're not a mechanic, but have you taken the time to familiarize yourself with your vehicle? Have you taken a course in basic first aid and know how and when to administer CPR? And maybe you're not a technically inclined person, but did you really invest all the effort necessary in learning that new device or app to get you out and back as if your life depended on it? While it's tempting to push this process aside and instead trust in something like this, you have to shake this mindset because there's no easy button in the wilderness. So take the time, make the effort as you plan your travels and assemble your kit. Now, if you're just getting started, all this talk is probably a little bit overwhelming and you might even have a significant other there on the couch with you shaking their heads. No, please don't get overwhelmed. We're simply emphasizing these risks so you go aware and prepared. And one of the best ways to help ensure you're prepared for what's out there is to travel with other experienced adventure seekers. Now, we've mentioned this before, but overlandbound.com regional forums are a great way to find other adventure seekers in your area to link up with for mutual support on the trail. You can also simply keep your solo travels local and achievable as you learn and build your skills for the more remote expeditions. And remember, there is no shame in sticking to your comfort level and turning around when things get beyond your capabilities. Nothing will get you stuck, broke down, hurt, or worse than pride and ego. So leave all those at home. So with all that being said, the truth of the matter is, even when we do our very best, we can't always prepare for everything. The unexpected can and will happen. Case in point. Important gear can be accidentally left behind. Weather and trail conditions can shift dramatically. And so there are times when you absolutely need outside assistance, whether that's from search and rescue or simply a few gallons of fuel or a tug from a muddy rut that took you by surprise. So now let's look at some of the available devices for when things get beyond your control. And we're going to dive into these just as soon as I get unstuck before it gets too dark. So let's roll back to the studio. Well, it's always fun when you come out to film a video on being prepared for the unexpected and get yourself stuck. I thought the trail connected here, but now I see it connects here. That was a snowdrift. Found it!
You might be surprised that with cell phone coverage getting better and better, even in some remote locations, your primary line of communication can still be a viable means of getting in touch with emergency services. Pair that with a high-end cell booster like our WeBoost unit, and you might find that with a faint cell signal, you might just be able to get a call or text out. It's a nice to have option, but I don't recommend that you invest in one until you've got something more reliable in the kit for emergency situations. Now, as for radios, I wouldn't even bring up a CB radio in a video about emergency preparation, but we actually came across someone who was stuck in the Mojave Desert and trying to raise help on his handheld CB. Needless to say, there weren't any good buddies or crazy cooters coming back at him. Crazy cooter coming at you, anybody home? So I'm not going to waste any more time on this. CBs are virtually useless in emergency situations and barely even passable for vehicle to vehicle comms. Am I coming in wall to wall and treetop tall on this one? Now, FRS, GMRS, and HAM are a huge upgrade in vehicle communications, but with the rare exception of an experienced HAM operator who's in range of a repeater system, it's not something that you would want to rely on for emergencies in the wilderness. And I know some of you HAM guys are powering up your hand-built keyboards to argue this in Morse code, but remember that even on the best of days, Someone has to be there listening on the other side and competent enough to notify emergency personnel of your exact location. Again, it's a nice to have thing for non-emergency support, but not something that you would want to rely on in a life or death situation. And now we come to the closest thing to an easy button, and that's these satellite devices, which are by far the most reliable option for off-grid communication. As long as you've got a clear view of the sky, you've got the ability to contact civilization. So without getting too deep into a device comparison, I want to give you an overview of what some of these can do and can't do. So if you've been following our adventures for any amount of time, you know that we've been big fans of the InReach system. And it started out by a company called DeLorme, who was then bought out by Garmin. And they've carried on that same process. So what we have now is a couple of different options when it comes to the InReach system. We've got the InReach Mini here, and then we've got the InReach Explorer Plus on the other side. And there's actually one kind of in the middle. So basically the difference between these two guys is this is a much smaller, more compact unit, um, but you can still connect to your phone using Bluetooth. So it's a lot easier to type out a message. You're able to text people back in civilization using these devices, bouncing it off of a satellite. And both of these you can tie a phone to, but the advantage of the larger unit over the smaller unit is the fact that you get a little bit bigger screen, plus there's actually GPS on this as well. So you can download a basic map to this unit and then track your progress, things like that. Both of these units also give you the opportunity to allow tracking. So you can drop breadcrumbs as short a segment as five minutes apart, and then it goes kind of up from there. So that's really great for someone back home to be watching your progress and seeing where you're checking in. If they lose communication, they know where to start looking. Both of these units have the SOS button. So on the InReach Explorer Plus, we're just gonna pull this back and press the SOS button here. On the InReach Mini, it's on the side as well. Press and hold and the cavalry will come. It'll also notify your designated contact as well. So again, we're gonna talk about layers in protection, but if you were to hit the SOS button, you've not only got it going to the local authorities, but also to your contact. So just in case it doesn't make it to those authorities, you've got more than one person who's been notified that there is a problem. Another handy feature for the InReach system is you can also pull forecast. So if you've been off grid for quite some time and you want to check in, make sure there's no monsoons, make sure there's no huge drop in temperature coming, uh, winds as well. You know, it's not fun to camp in the wind. You can pull a weather report using these devices, which we have done multiple times. And it's one of our favorite features for these devices. Now I will say, and this is only to bring up a very important item. And that is the fact that if you are only relying on one device for your emergency preparations, you could be in trouble because this device I'm holding right here is actually dead, completely dead. We've walked through all the troubleshooting steps. It will not boot back up. It happened on our trip in Alaska and thankfully we had another device as a backup, but it's something to consider. It's not to say that this is a bad device. I Googled it and 
nobody else that I've found had had this problem. So it's not a prevalent issue, but you know, we use the heck out of these things and we, uh, we killed it. So something to keep in mind. So on that note, we actually are branching out, trying some different devices just so we can give you guys feedback on what our thoughts are. And what we landed on was this Zolio SOS device. And I've not even booted it up yet. This fresh out of the package just so I could shoot the video. So we're going to be testing this. Now, what this does not do, if I understand correctly, is it does not allow breadcrumbs. So you're not going to be tracking, but it does allow you the opportunity to press this check button, boom, and check in automatically with a, with a pre-built message just that says, okay, I'm okay camping here or whatever. Uh, it has the SOS button underneath a protective cover, and you can also tie your phone to this and type out a more detailed text message. So I'm looking forward to activating this guy and giving you guys a more in-depth comparison when it comes to these devices, because this guy right here is a lot cheaper than some of the other options. And I'll pop up the prices for each one of these. Boom, right here, right here. So looking forward to trying this guy out. All right. so getting serious now. This is the ACR PLB, personal locate, personnel, is it personnel? Personal locator beacon. I knew I'd get it right eventually. So this device right here is more official. Is that's the best way that I can explain it. So when you activate this guy, there's actually an antenna that you unwind. You place this in view of the sky. You press the activation button here on the side and what it does is it sends two signals one to the satellite two it puts out a local 406 megahertz beacon so that as rescue crews get closer to you they can actually pinpoint your location because obviously satellites sometimes can be wildly off by several hundred yards or maybe even a couple of miles depending on cloud cover or if you're in a canyon things like that this one is also required by international law to be responded to. And I did a bit of research on this before we went to Alaska the first time. And what I found was there are some articles out there by people stating that these devices use a third party emergency response system. And if you're traveling internationally, it is possible that if they were to receive a request from one of these third parties, they do not have to respond by international law. They do have to respond to one of these. So do some research on that. And depending on your situation, you may want to have both. That's what we did for Alaska the first time, but something to consider. This right here is serious business in my opinion. But the downside is you can't text from this. This is, this is one way. This is the send the Calvary device right here. And then we have the one to rule them all. And that is our satellite phone. We uh, actually rented one of these. There's there's a company, I think it's uh, satellitephone.com. I'll put up the actual website down here, but they allow you to rent these. So if you have a big trip, if you're only going out for a couple of weeks, maybe you're back east and you've got a big Death Valley trip or something planned, and you have some concerns about being able to to communicate and having the family to be able to reach you in case something goes wrong back home, you know, that goes both ways. The satellite phone is the way to do that. We've been really impressed with this. We actually ended up buying one after we had rented it because shoot, this is what we do. And I don't know why I didn't buy one sooner because sometimes in you're in situations where you just need more information about the area you're in, maybe you're running low on fuel, you don't have any signal on your cell phone and you're trying to get back out of a situation, top the tanks off, you can make a phone call. Uh, maybe you've got a code that your engine has thrown and you're just trying to figure out, is it safe to continue on? And all you have is the code from your OBD2 reader. Hey, you can call up your friends. Hey, Google this for me. Tell me what it is. Okay. That's just a speed sensor or whatever. We're good to go. We'll fix it when we get back. So this right here, like I said, it, it offsets everything. You can call out, you can phone home with this guy right here. And this particular one, this is the Iridium Extreme, actually has an SOS button on it as well. I haven't activated the service for it. It's an optional service. And so I'll probably end up doing that eventually. But again, 
if you want to just be done with it, this right here will do that. And just as a side note, each one of these inReach devices and the Zolio require a monthly subscription plan. Now you can put those on hold. There's various tiers that they allow you to choose from. But just keep in mind that it's not a buy once and done. You're gonna to have to sign up for the subscription service and then go from there. So another thing to remember, this right here, no subscription. It's just ready. Push the button, Calvary comes. And then on the sat phone right here, I actually bought the 10 minute plan because I don't plan on making many phone calls. When I'm out in the wilderness, I'm not looking to talk to anyone unless it's actually an emergency. But I did sign up for their rollover plan. So I've got like 60 or 70 minutes saved up on this guy right here. If I decided I want to have a chat with someone while sitting on, I don't know, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon or something. <laughs> so are these devices a fail safe? No. Are they 100% reliable? No, we answered that. And that's why you need a layered approach to your emergency preparations. So if one layer fails, another one is there to back you up. And for example, even if you have one of these SOS capable devices, you might not get the chance to press the button if you're knocked out or physically unable to reach the unit. And that's where the most important part of your emergency preparation comes into play. And that is your emergency contact. Now think carefully before you choose this person. You're going to want someone on the other side is keeping tabs on your progress and who's going to be cool headed enough to handle the call if an SOS comes in or if you miss a predetermined check-in schedule. Now for us, when we're back east, I count on my dad to keep tabs on our whereabouts. And when I'm out west, I rely on my best friend, Keith Kessler, who you've seen in some of our videos. And even though the west is huge and at any given time I could be one or two days away from Keith. I trust him to determine our location and depending on the circumstances, contact the best local organization to get us emergency services or basic assistance headed our way as needed. And then depending on the device that we're using at the time, he can also check in on our progress with the breadcrumbs that we drop every 10 minutes or so. And then if we don't check in, he at least has a last known location to share with search and rescue after a predetermined lack of activity or if we don't respond to his messages that he's texting to the devices. Now folks, I highly recommend that you add one of these devices to your kit and ensure that you have a reliable emergency contact with a developed plan for how you're gonna check in during your travels. At a minimum, if your budget doesn't allow one of these devices just yet, which is kind of a hard argument because this one right here is pretty affordable, at least have an emergency contact in place where you can share your route or area of exploration in detail and have a plan for what they're supposed to do if you don't check in or return by a given time frame because it can mean the difference between life and death now i know this is all a lot to cover and so i'm just going to ask you guys do you have any stories to share do you have any experiences that you want to tell us down in the comments below tell us what happened tell us maybe what mistakes were made and then what lessons were learned please feel free to share those below and guys if you're watching the video go down there and check those out and you know if you like this video if you found it useful then please do all those youtube -y things and then share it with a friend share it with someone who needs encouragement in developing their own emergency plan and if you've been following us for a while you also know that we're a viewer supported channel and every single person who joins our patreon community is responsible for keeping all this going and we'd love to have you a part of our support team. So join us by visiting lso.link forward slash support and get access to all kinds of bonus info like GPS data, extended ad-free episodes, and direct access to us so that you can ask your own questions about your adventures or your rig or anything like that. Thank you, patrons. Thank you guys for all that you do. We seriously, we would not be here without you guys. So until next time. Safe travels and stay curious. I need that. I need something. Hold on. Now, just in case you guys didn't know, no, I did not stage this. I came out here to record something about getting stuck, and I got stuck. But we're making the best of it. And I thought it to be a very poignant opportunity. Because sometimes it's the trips that are really short that surprise you.
I think that'll work. That's how deep it is. <laughs> Just got these gators today too. Check them out. Well, that was relatively easy, but it could have been much worse. If I'd been much further from civilization, I didn't have those traction boards, if I didn't have a winch. It was a short trip and I didn't bring a lot of clothes to start with, so things can get sideways real quick. Gotta be thinking about those things. Gotta be thinking about those. This is fun. I freaking love snow, y'all. This is fun. It's new though. I haven't done a lot of it, so I'm learning. Still learning, always learning. Man, I have to carry some speed. <laughs> 